Hello, this is John Canopoulos from our center here in Athens, Greece, the uh, Laser Vision Amateur Surgery Center and Clinical Professional Ophthalmology at NYU Medical School. Very, very interesting case, uh, despite the fact that uh, we're going to see this 75-plus-year-old gentleman with a very dense cataract. He is a transplant patient of over 30 years. I think he was 36, if I'm not uh, mistaken. You see the graft is still holding well. This is the scary view of the fundus with the optus. It can hardly see through. I could not, with um, my um, uh, direct ophthalmoscopy, take a look. There's also some diabetic retinopathy. The OptoView OCT is able to image the macula, and we can see some heart exudates and some fluid. Mild diabetic edema. The graft, surprisingly, has a great cell count, over 1,000, and we're close to 40 years. And, of course, uh, some significant astigmatism. Three diopters here with the... Um, reflection uh, topography. This is our uh, interferometry, the Tomei, which has its own uh, placido disc topography device to calculate the center topography. And we've done uh, our calculations based on the three millimeter total cornea provided by the uh, Pentacam. Because in a transplant, we're not sure that the posterior uh, cornea will be as regular as a naive cornea. So three millimeters uh, central millimeters, keratometries, and they can affect not only the axis of the astigmatic uh, insertion we're seeing here, a bubble of air, blue dye to stain the uh, anterior capsule. It would be very difficult to do capture exercise. The cornea reflex is very poor. I'm using visco magic, uh, viscoelastic for endothelial protection, and we know that we need a double here. Number one, because of the very hard lens. Number two, because this is a cornea transplant. The donor cells have survived in the host for 40 years. We definitely don't want to be the turning point for them to uh, be reduced. And again, this will be challenging with a femtosecond laser, a, a manual continuous curvilinear capture rex. As you can see how the blue dye stiffens the interior capsule, makes this easier. And I think the reason I'm playing this uh, in real time, the capture rex as that is, is because it is pivotal to the success of the procedure. With such a hard lens, the lens occupies most of the capsule bag. There's really no cortex. And uh, proof uh, in the pudding, here we were seeing with our signature White Star FACO device, we're on 60% energy here. This is the, the strongest energy we're using. And I am proud to share with you that I used 250 joules of total energy in this case, which uh, I was in the beginning contemplating whether I would do a, as an extra cap. Uh, I'm showing you how many times I'm replenishing the interior chamber with viscode, which will be our guardian agil, if you may, for the cornea of the thelium. And very careful, again, as I mentioned, the lens is almost one single large piece. Any uh, abrupt movement can tear not just the capsural um, opening, but the whole bag Things are getting easier and yet more visco. This is the third tube we're going through, but um, we'll see a little bit how this uh, really opted to benefit uh, not only our procedure, but of course our premier uh, purpose, the patient himself. Um, this is done under payable anesthesia, a very short acting payable anesthesia that wears off in an hour. I use 1% xylocaine peribobary with um, uh, hyaluronidase. And then um, the last uh, pieces uh, of the uh, very dense cataract, and we're seeing uh, irrigation aspiration here of how little cortex is left just in the periphery of uh, the actual cataract. There's very little cortex left. We're very important to remove this carefully. Uh, the visualization has improved dramatically. We can see our toric uh, lens markings uh, placed, and this is uh, our favorite Axoft. A spheric torque IOL. We saw the significant astigmatic correction and the lens uh, folds in the capsule bag. Still my favorite lens and our go-to lens. We use 80% torque lenses in our routine cataract procedures. Here in a post-transplant patient, higher astigmatism will obviously necessitate a higher level of astigmatic correction. And here I'm using my Sinsky to pull in and tease the iris Always careful in keratoconic patients for urethra valio syndrome. The dilatation for the procedure may cause a permanently dilated iris. That's why I'm going in with myocol. This is the patient the first day, believe it or not. He is 2040 the first day from bare count fingers vision preoperatively. And this is a week later, 2040 plus, I'm corrected, 
an excellent result in my opinion and thanks for watching this fascinating case which turned out very well. This is John Canlopoulos signing off.